Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's Stillwater tutorial. What you see in the vise is a fly called the Angel Cormoran. It was a request and I've got to admit that I didn't have a clue what the guy was talking about. So, social media being what it is, I asked the question and a few people came back with the answer for me. So thanks to Dave Murray who was first with his picture on a postcard and uh, I'm going to show you how it's tied. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is uni thread, it's white and it's at 6 -0. First thing I want to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread, just running it through my fingers to get any excess away and I'm going to catch that well back from the eye and use my rat's tail to run a bed of thread down the shank of the hook. Just to where a barb would be approximately on a barbed hook and then I'll remove my waist. Okay next then there's a couple of things you can do here. You can use uh, as I'm going to Pearl Vivis or you can also use Mylar. I've done another one here. I was sent a couple of different pictures of what the dressing was for this fly and this is a, a black one that I did and that's using a mylar body so depending on what effect you want um, you know use what you see fit. I'm going to use the Pearl Lurex. Now the reason I've chosen the white thread of course is because the Pearl Lurex will allow some colour to come through and I don't want that. I want that sort of shimmer, silver sort of shape to the body. And so I've got that tied in. Next thing I'm going to do is bring this up. First turns on the shank of the hook itself and then I'm going to use touch and turns. Taking my time I want good coverage with this. Avoiding the point of the hook, of course, all the way up the body. Then once I get up to around the thorax area, I'm going to capture that in with a couple of turns of thread over the top of the pearl lurex, then a couple of turns in front. I can then remove the excess. Just remove that little bit there. There we go. Okay, so far, so good. So, uh, the wing is actually sunburst as well. And I'm not a big fan of sunburst marabou, actually. As you can see, the stuff I'm using is from uh, Keith Fraser. And it only cost me £1.50 in 19 oat cake. I don't know how much marabou costs nowadays. Not, not that cheap, that's for sure. So I've got a, a plume of the feather out and I'm going to take about a thumbnail's worth. I like my cormorant wings to be quite sparse. So I'll take a thumbnail's worth. Pull it all together. Give it a little twist at the end. And then I can remove that waste piece. I just like to damp down the ends, make sure I've got all nice and tidy at the front. And before I catch this wing in, I'm just going to add a little bit more wax to my thread. You don't want your wing being pulled off. So once that's in place, and once you've waxed that thread actually, your wing will go nowhere. So a few turns just to get it into place. Now this is obviously far too long, so I'm going to come in with my thumb and forefinger of my right hand, clamp down on the marabou, and then remove the excess. Now although it's a size 10 hook, it is quite small, it's well within the, the competition rules. I always like to damp down my wing, it just makes it easier to manage, and uh, 
Next, I'm going to add some, what was called in the original dress, actually, was some uh, flashaboo, but I don't have any of that, so I'm using some of this stuff. I've taken a single strand already out, and what I want is approximately four strands in my wing. So I'm just going to marry this up, oh, just off camera there. And this is what I used for the ones I've been tying, so it's working. It seems to work okay for me. A couple of turns, and then another couple of turns to secure it in. Then I can come in with my snips and simply take that away. Again, I'm going to wet my thumb and forefinger and just get that sitting out the way. Next then, the wing buds are from Comp Candy, and these ones are fluorescent sunburst. And what I'm going to do is catch one in on my side with the point going towards the eye. Two turns. Then I can use that point as a guide for my next one on your side. And again, I'm going to use two turns. Then I'm going to come back to just where my wing is. Then Using my thumb, I'm just going to encourage them tips back out the way. And remove them. Excuse my fingers. There we go. Now, it's tempting to trim this up now, but I'm not going to because I've still got to put in my little flashaboo. I don't know if you, you noticed with the original pattern. Um, there's a little bit of flashaboo in there. Now I don't have flashaboo unfortunately, so what I'm going to use is some FNF. Uh, this is the Baitfish AED, and I only need a tiny little pinch of it. That, that's probably far too much. I'm going to get rid of half of that. Don't need as much. Then I'm just going to catch it in like so. It's only a little turn you need. And then I can push that up. Make sure everything's back out the way. And then bring that in. And that's worked out splendidly. Next then, I'm going to find my quick finish tool. And just give it three turns to hold that into place. Like so. Okay. Now that I've got the the flashaboo bit in, I can then decide how long I want these buds to be. And I'll look for about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to tilt the vise my way so I can see what I'm doing. Sorry if it's just dropped out of camera, but you'll see it back in a second. And there we go. So that's the wing buds done. And all that remains for me to do is add in a hot collar. And the one I've chosen to use is uh, the Glowbrite number no. 5. And I've got that in a bobbin. And just need to catch that right in at the eye. A few turns. Once you've made a few turns, you can take your tail end and snap it away. Then just build your head slightly. Then before you come in to finish off, I like to just add a little bit of UV resin so that I don't have to go in afterwards with varnish or super glue or whatever you choose to uh, finish your flies with. I, I like the, the resins. So once that's done, I can tighten that up. Come over with my UV pen. And then using the serrated edge of my scissors, I can remove my floss. And there we go. So this is a massive fly on lock inch apparently. 
uh, which is a superb fishery. If you live in Scotland and you're able to travel there, I can thoroughly recommend it after fishing there last year while on holiday. Uh, the boy that runs it knows what he's on and he'll keep you right. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking that little button. I really appreciate the support.